We're delighted to welcome uh, to the show this evening Michael Monty, who is the Assistant Director for Community Development for the City CETO Office, and George Tabo, again, a regular, back on the mm -hmm. show. As a result of popular demand, thousands <laughs> of people writing in, they're tired of seeing me, they want George, so we brought George back. <laughs> there is, um, as I think people may be aware, as usual, there's just an enormous amount of activity uh, taking place in the city of Burlington. The agenda is full. We're all going slightly nuts here. Uh, and I wanted uh, Michael and George to help me review many of the uh, issues that we're uh, currently dealing with. Uh, Michael, let's start with you. And I know your office uh, is very, very busy. But before we, we get to some of the things that are going on within the CETO office, uh, let me just mention uh, to people that within the very near future, we'll be seeing a lot of activity on our streets and sidewalks. The uh, annual street and sidewalk repaving program is about to begin. In fact, the city is in the process of signing contracts. We'll be spending approximately a million dollars this year uh, to repave streets and sidewalks to improve handicap accessibility. Uh, and that program is going well under the uh, direction of the public works people. And we'll have them on uh, in the near future to review with you uh, that issue. Um, Michael, in terms of economic development, one of the issues that the Board of Aldermen has been discussing that I know that you have been uh, working uh, a lot on is our relationship with the Navy in terms of the uh, Navy uh, Reserve Center at the foot of, of College Street. Can you review with the viewers uh, what our goals are there and, and uh, where we are in that process? Well, um, five years ago when the Community and Economic Development Office was uh, first started, we. Uh, made contact with the Navy for the uh, potential of asking them to move to another site somewhere in Chittenden County. And uh, some people think that that's sort of a, maybe a big mistake, but in truth that the Navy Reserve doesn't use the waterfront at all. They use it every three weeks and they have classrooms there. So they don't really have a, a use for the waterfront. And they recognized at the very beginning that there was a, a good reason for them to move, that the, that particular piece of land and that particular building was a prime waterfront site, it was a key site, uh, that the kinds of uses that the public could enjoy down there uh, were uh, exciting and, and uh, that in fact having a building of that kind, which is a security building because it is a military installation, a six foot high fence with barbed wire was something that really didn't belong uh, on a public waterfront uh, where we wanted to have as many people enjoying the, uh, the water's edge as possible. Uh, over the last six months, we've definitely sat down and said, uh, well, we're going to decide this and make a final decision on what to do with this particular piece of land. And over the last couple of weeks, we've come forward uh, with uh, terms and conditions for essentially the um, moving out of the Naval Reserve uh, um, facility from that site to some other location for the city to take control over that site. Um, and that those terms and conditions have come before the Board of Aldermen and the and, the, and yourself right. to, for consideration. Okay, essentially, um, I, I think most people know that we have been working very hard to try to create a waterfront in downtown Burlington that can be enjoyed by all of our people. We're making real progress. Uh, the bike path should be completed this construction season. Um, we've acquired more parkland, and uh, the community boathouse that we'll talk about briefly uh, also hopefully will be completed on July 4th. Uh, the building right next to the uh, the area where the community boathouse is going to be is the Naval Reserve Center. And the point that we have been making for a number of years, and as Mike just, just indicated, is that would be an extraordinary piece of property for public use. And of course now, you know, with, with the Navy controlling it, it is not for public use. Uh, what we have negotiated, and Michael and, and Peter Clavello have been active in that, is an agreement with the Navy that if, in fact, we can replace that building uh, with as good or better facility, the Navy would be prepared to give us, the city, the present spot. We would move them to a new building. Uh, and the beauty of the agreement that we're trying to structure is that it would not cost taxpayers any money at all because utilizing the Naval Reserve building in a public way, we could rent out uh, some of that space, derive an income which could pay off the bond that we would have to float to build the new structure for the Navy. So it's a win-win situation. The Navy will get something that will probably be better for them mm -hmm. than what they presently have, which is, is in need of some significant rehab money. Uh, the city would get perhaps the most important piece 
of waterfront property that we have been looking for for, for a long time, use it uh, for public use in a way not yet determined. I know there have been a lot of ideas that have been floated about museums, restaurants, uh, but certainly public activities, ways that the people can come into that property. And, and the beauty of that, again, is that it adjoins where the community boathouse is going to be. So I'd like pe people to picture the waterfront around College Street and see the community boathouse, where you're going to have all kinds of year-round activity, boating, uh, ice uh, skating in the wintertime, a major focal point for people to enjoy 12 months a year, and adjoining it, the Naval Reserve area, which would also be a public facility. So I think this is a significant step forward in accomplishing uh, our goal of creating a people-oriented waterfront. I want to congratulate you and your colleagues in CETO for, for, uh, for the breakthrough. Very exciting. Yeah, we're not finished with it by any means. Still a lot of work that has to be done, but we, we're making some progress, and I think we'll see a lot of support for that on the Board of, uh, of Aldermen. Um, Mike, what else is, is going on in CETO that you might want to... Uh, well, the community boathouse uh, uh, is going great guns with the construction is beginning and, and uh, all of the contractors are very excited about the work and doing the work and, and the vendors are all pretty much online and we, we expect to be open uh, July 2nd for some tours of the boathouse facility itself, which is, if people don't know, it's on a 30 by 120 foot barge. It's a two-story building, a beautifully designed building, a public building. Um, and inside the building there will be a variety of uses and a lot of public space, including a, a small snack facility or a restaurant, uh, uh, the renting of boats and canoes and, and small sailboats, the renting of larger sailboats and, and uh, bicycles and during the, the wintertime, uh, and oh, scuba diving rentals and lessons and, uh, and during the wintertime a whole range of other activities which are, we'll begin to work on as soon as we get the summer going, but uh, some of those are ice skating and cross-country skiing and maybe even ice, ice boat sailing. So it's, a, so it's a very exciting, exciting program, and uh, with the College Street renovations and a new uh, pier, a 5,000 square foot pier at the edge of College Street, it's going to be a very exciting uh, facility. And, uh, July 4th is our target date for, for the programs to be starting, and hopefully that Monday, which will be the end of the July 4th weekend, people can come down and rent a canoe or rent a rowboat and uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the lake. Okay, uh, and I hope most people know about that, um, that project because I think of all of the waterfront projects so far, that is, that is the most exciting. And uh, as Mike indicated, what it will mean is that 12 months a year, that community boathouse will be a center of activity. Uh, in the summertime, we'll be renting out uh, all kinds of boats. Uh, in the wintertime, we'll have through the bike path, cross-country skiing, there'll be ice skating, ice fishing. Uh, and it's going to be, I think, the most significant development in terms of bringing people down to our waterfront. And what we intend to do is, is throughout the summer, starting in early July, July 4th, is, is have a, a variety of activities which will just bring people down to the waterfront and allow them to enjoy that area. So we think we're making some real progress in, in creating the kind of waterfront that the people of the city of Burlington want. A lot more work has to be done, but I think the construction and the opening of the community boathouse is a, a very significant breakthrough and a major step forward. And, and accompanying that, if we can make the, uh, the successful uh, deal with the Navy in terms of that uh, okay. Naval Reserve Center, we'll have really mm -hmm. taken a, a giant step forward. One, one thing that you mentioned earlier was that the bike path uh, should be open by June 1st. And this is the, the so-called missing link of the bike path between the Lakeside Avenue and Perkins Pier in the Barge Canal area. And I've been on there quite a few times over the winter. Construction is about 80% complete and it's going to be open. And it really is going to be one of the most spectacular sections of the bike path. It's just quite beautiful. And uh, I look forward to a grand opening of that in uh, early June. And it's going well. Okay. While we're discussing the waterfront, there's an issue I know that, that everybody in Burlington is familiar with, most people in our county are familiar with, and that is the pollution problem uh, with Lake Champlain. As I hope most people understand, we have negotiated with the CUNY administration a major sewer improvement project uh, which would require a $13 million program from the City of Burlington. We would put in $13 million. State of Vermont would put in $13 million. There would be a $26 million zero interest loan program. $52 million project, which is the largest environmental project in the history of the State of Vermont. It is going through the legislature. It's gone through the House committees. Uh, it's gone through the House. It has gone through one Senate committee. It is now today, as we speak, which is Wednesday, uh, in another Senate committee. 
there's no question in my mind that the bill is going to get through the legislature. The concern that I have now is it is not exactly the form that we would like it in the sense that the payback from Burlington, our ratepayers, and from other, uh, for other communities is, is too high, frankly. And we want to see if we can change it and get it back to the original form that we had agreed uh, with the community administration on. Uh, in fact, as soon as this program ends, I'm on my way down to Montpelier to see if we can negotiate that. Because, in fact, what is being asked of the ratepayers of Burlington now is too much. Uh, and that's true of other communities as well. But at this point, at least, it looks like uh, almost positively there will be a bill. Uh, and we, once and for all, and, and I'm very, very proud of this, and I think we all should be, are going to stop the pollution of Lake Champlain. Uh, it is a $52 million project. It's essentially going to clean up our antiquated sewer system, rebuild our wastewater plants. Uh, it is a major step forward in terms of environmental protection for Chittenden County. So we're proud of that. More work, though, has to be done on that. Uh, George, I know that you're going about 20 hours a day running around, flying around the office. There are a lot of things going on. Do you want to touch on some of the uh, issues that you've been working on? Sure. Well, I think uh, one of the things that's coming up this Saturday that's important to a lot of people is the greenup efforts around the city. Basically, uh, both Friday and Saturday, we're going to have a number of activities. Uh, and uh, Friday afternoon, many of the businesses in the community are going to go out and clean up neighborhoods uh, and places around where their businesses are. And then Saturday, we're doing we're meeting at Battery Park at about uh, 9 a.m. to kick off the Green Up Day. Uh, we're going to be putting a new sculpture uh, in Battery Park uh, by Aaron Tager. Huh. We're also going to be having some unusual type of cleanups. For example, the uh, Waterfront Diving Center is going to be uh, cleaning up the lake bottom uh, on the Mobile Beach. Basically, this the Park Department is opening up Mobile Beach for uh, official permitted swimming this year for the first time and uh, with uh, one of the prerequisites is to make sure that the, the bottom area is clean up of any uh, potential dangerous objects so that the uh, there's going to be about eight or nine divers Sorry. Saturday morning getting together to uh, do a sweep of the mobile beach okay. so we'll have some underwater cleanup going um, and it may not be that we can send a photographer down there too but uh, <laughs> if we can see what, the, what they bring up uh, anybody, anybody interested in that can come to Battery Park Saturday morning at 9 o'clock uh, or call the mayor's office and we can direct you to another, another location. Okay, while we're talking about cleaning up, uh, I just talked the other day with the Public Works Department. This year, I think the residents of Burlington will see a major improvement in street sweeping. Okay, uh, for many, many years, the, sweep, the sweeping situation in the city was pretty poor. Uh, since we have created the Public Works Department, we have seen an improvement. Also, they have some new trucks, new equipment to do the job better. What the head of the department promises me is that he thinks we can get out as often as 10 times a year to clean the streets, sweep the streets in the city of Burlington, which is a gigantic step forward. The problem that we are having is that despite signs which are posted on streets which say no parking, street sweeping, people are still parking. So we would very much appreciate people paying attention to the signs. Please move your cars when there are signs there. Park them on the other side of the street or whatever. Uh, because we are trying to make a real effort to keep the city clean. You know, we see that especially, you know, spring comes, if spring is ever going to come. But, uh, with the snow gone at least, there's a lot of crap all over the city that we would like to try to get rid of. But we need the cooperation of the people, and we're, we're making a, a real effort. Okay, George, what else is on well, your uh, Additionally, uh, in terms of sprucing up the city, we're going to be doing another flower planting day on Saturday, May 28th. And uh, we're going to be working a lot about uh, most of the parks and some other public sites around the city, Perkins Pier, City Hall Park, out on North Avenue, where we were out last year. And uh, we have, interestingly, the uh, City Hall Park design is going to be rather unusual. Some, it's going to be done by uh, a couple of groups in the community. One, um, the Beyond War organization, oh, great. and also they're going to be working in conjunction with people at the way station. So part of the uh, responsibility of the way station and people that are that are living there will be to share in the maintenance and planting of the flowers at City Hall Park and be able to uh, uh, do something productive, you know, for the community. So that should be very interesting too. That flower planting is going to be on Saturday, May 28th. Again, we can appreciate anybody who likes to. Uh, plant flowers. We're going to have probably uh, seven to 10,000 plants 
things to get into the ground uh, around the city on that date. That's great. And, uh, okay, what else do you have on your... Uh well, I was talking about the Boathouse. We're looking forward to a big uh, July 4th weekend celebration, and some of the planning for that is going into place. Um, starting uh, Thursday night with Battery Park on, on June 30th, and continuing for each day up until Monday, July 4th, there's going to be a number of activities uh, that the city is going to be involved in, musical um, activities, uh, chicken barbecues, this type of thing. Those things are falling into a place. Uh, with the fireworks slated uh, as traditionally on Sunday, July 3rd, the night before July 4th. Okay. We're, we're doing some work on that. And this should be then a, a really special July 4th celebration because not only are we celebrating July 4th, but we're celebrating the opening of the community boathouse. So we'll, the word will get out to people, but uh, put that on your calendar, please, because I think you're going to see a lot of fun activities down in, in the waterfront. Let me just go over, we had, uh, again, this is Wednesday that we're recording this program. Monday night, there was an interesting meeting of the Board of Aldermen uh, a number of issues uh, came up and, and were dealt with. Um, there was a resolution unanimously passed by the Board of Aldermen. I don't remember exactly the wording of it. It was changed around a little bit. But essentially, in support of the activities of students and faculty at the University of Vermont who uh, had staged a sit-in uh, demonstration at President Coors' office because of the lack of minority representation on the campus. Uh, essentially, what the students and faculty had, had picked up on is that for literally 20 years, uh, the university has said and acknowledged that the type of minority representation on that campus, both in terms of faculty and students, was not what it should be. They have acknowledged that, and yet very little has happened uh, after 20 years of discussion. The students, in my view, and the faculty handled themselves uh, with a lot of dignity. I think the issues that they raised were the right issues, uh, and I, I, I congratulate Dr. Kua for not running away from the issue, from sitting down, spending long periods of time negotiating with the students. Uh, it appears that the agreement reached is something that both parties feel good about. I think it'll make for a better university and, in fact, for a better community. We are a multiracial nation. We are a multiracial world. Uh, and that's something not only that we should not try to avoid, it's something that we should embrace and recognize. Uh, so I congratulate the, the university for making, I think, a, a significant uh, step forward in that direction. The board passed a resolution uh, applauding the students and faculty. Um, the board also passed a resolution expressing strong concern about what is called, quote unquote, gay bashing up at the university. There was an incident, a very ugly incident, uh, in which uh, people in the gay community were I mean, just uh, treated very vulgarly, is all I can say. Uh, it's not even worthwhile repeating uh, the phraseology of what was uh, apparently uh, <coughs> discussed at one of the fraternity houses. It's too vulgar to even mention on the air, but um, the uh, Board of Aldermen was unanimous in, in condemning that type of activity and supporting the university's effort uh, to understand that, that all people are human beings and should be treated with, with dignity and respect, and that type of behavior is not acceptable uh, within this community. Uh, then later on in the evening, uh, in terms of dealing with liquor licenses, which is something the board deals with on a regular basis, uh, rather spontaneously, I should say, although it, it had been something that had been discussed for a number of years, the question of a liquor license for the Ethan Allen Club uh, was discussed. Uh, as I think many people, especially those who have lived in Burlington for any length of time, know, the Ethan Allen Club is a very unusual type club in the sense that it is really the gathering place for some of the most powerful men in the state of Vermont. Uh, all of the banks are, are well represented, many politicians, uh, not me, but many other politicians uh, are members, um, university presidents, senators, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's a real powerhouse. That's, that's where a lot of the, the big money people get together and they, they discuss the future of, of our county and uh, of our state. It is no secret that the Ethan Allen Club, since its inception, has never allowed women to be members of the club. And uh, that to me is just absurd. Uh, it never had, it never made sense. It certainly does not make sense in the year 1988. We are above that type of thing. And, and we would be outraged if they banned uh, minority groups or Jewish people or anybody else. And to say that women cannot become members of that club in the year 1988 is, is too ridiculous to even uh, go into the great discussion about. We have a woman governor. We have three members of the board of uh, all the persons who are women. And to say that they can't uh, sit down in that club and, and discuss issues of concern to them or be members of that club 
It makes no sense at all. This overt discrimination is absurd. Uh, in any case, the board chose not at that meeting to deny the Ethan Allen Club a license. It was felt appropriate that the Ethan Allen Club come in perhaps and, and, and talk about what their future policies might be. But I think there is widespread support on the board for the Ethan Allen Club to change its policy. Uh, my guess is that there will be a resolution at the next Board of Aldermen's meeting uh, condemning uh, sexual segregation, which is what it's about, segregation. Uh, and hopefully the Ethan Allen Club can change its policy. The city's attorney is now researching what options the city has regarding this matter. But that's an issue I suspect you'll be hearing uh, a, a good deal about. Also at the board meeting, uh, Alderman Jean Bergwin, uh, with unanimous support, uh, brought forth a resolution, which will, I think later be amplified into an ordinance, um, prohibiting the use of products which have CFC in them. Is that what it's um, called? CFCs. CFCs. And I'm not a chemist, but I think most viewers are aware of the very serious problem that we're now having in, this, in, in terms of the depletion of the ozone layer and, and, and the, uh, the fact that many scientists are believing that there's going to be a great incidence in skin cancer because of that. Um, and Senator Stafford deserves a lot of credit in, in negotiating with McDonald's when you go to McDonald's and you get all that styrofoam stuff, uh, the production of that product uh, is impacting on the ozone layer. And Gene's uh, resolution was prohibiting the use of uh, those products in terms of city departments. Um, so in, in our own parks department, for example, uh, we would not be buying those products for hot uh, drink uh, uh, cups. Uh, and uh, we are also exploring the possibility and the legal implications of banning the use of that product in the city itself, and which I would, uh, at this point, support. Uh, I think cities and, and, and states have got to become much tougher in terms of the manufacturing of products which are destroying our environment. And not only in this instance the ozone layer, but that stuff stays and we dump that into the landfill. It stays forever. It, it is not de degradable. Uh, and it just does not make a lot of sense. So uh, we think we're making some progress uh, in that area. Uh, George, uh, you want to talk a little bit about the city commissions, the situation regarding commissions and, and uh, well, the uh, <coughs> members of the various city commissions, police, electric, fire, uh, that type of thing, uh, who are getting off their, their uh, board position at, at the end of this fiscal year. Um, those spots are going to be open, and it's one time every year where the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor choose replacements or re-nominate certain people for another uh, three-year term on most commissions. And uh, those that meeting will take place the first uh, early part of June, probably the first Monday of June. And uh, applications are invited from people in the community who feel that they want to get involved in certain areas that they might have some expertise in or are, have a serious interest in. Uh, applications are available here in City Hall. Uh, they're due, I think, by the third week of May to have them back in to the, so they can be circulated to uh, members of the Board of Aldermen. And uh, uh, so the, you can pick them up at the City Clerk's office basically during working hours, 8 to, to 5 o'clock uh, every day of the week. So they'd be very, we want to encourage as many people as possible to, to apply and uh, if they're interested in a spot in one of the City Commissions. There, there's no commission that has a paid position. They're basically volunteer. Uh, they meet once, twice, three times a month, and uh, you know, some of them do require a considerable amount of time. So you can you know, ask people in City Hall or other commissions for information about the, uh, about the position, but we encourage people to get involved. Now's the time. Okay. Um, is that how we're doing in terms of time? Uh, four there's, there's another issue that, that I do want to mention, which I'm very excited about. It's about 90% sure that it's going to happen, but uh, sometimes you're never sure until it happens. Uh, as I think uh, some viewers know, we are attempting to establish a sister city relationship with a city in the Soviet Union. Uh, I am very, very excited about that for a number of reasons. Uh, ultimately, I think that probably the most effective way of breaking down international distrust and breaking down the stereotypes that people have of other nations is simply getting to know uh, our neighbors in this world on a one-to-one -one basis. And I think ultimately the more that that's done and you can sit down at a table and talk about differences 
in a rational manner while understanding that, that deep down human beings are human beings. The more that we can do that, uh, the less tension that's go there's going to be in this world. Um, in any case, um, we are attempting to establish a, a sister city relationship with a city in the Soviet Union. The city selected is a city called Yaroslavl, which is about 100 miles north of Moscow. Uh, at this point, we are intending to take a delegation of people from uh, the Burlington area, over about a dozen people all together, uh, will be traveling with me uh, to Yaroslavl. At this point, we're thinking of leaving on um, May 31st, and we'll be gone for about 10 days. And ironically, of course, this is exactly the same time as President Reagan is going to be in Moscow uh, negotiating with Gorbachev. So actually, we'll be there that time as well, which is, is very, very exciting. Uh, we just got off the phone this morning with um, a man named um, Alexander, uh, what was his name? No, Alexander Rybakov was the, was the senator from Connecticut. I don't think he's now in the Soviet <laughs> Union. This is Rizzi Rybakov that we're dealing with. He's deputy mayor. No, not Rybakov. Uh, Gor Gorbazin, um, I don't remember right now. But uh, actually, uh, he's the deputy mayor there. He speaks English fluently, uh, and, and very. I think he's very excited about this program as well. And, and, and what we are looking forward to accomplishing here is not simply one trip. What we are looking forward is to lay the groundwork for an ongoing program, which could mean a dozen different things. Uh, on this trip, we'll be taking uh, a physician who is interested in healthcare facilities in the Soviet Union. We're taking a uh, business person as well as that's Peter Clavel, the head of our CEDA office, who's interested in the possibility of improving trade relations uh, with the Soviet Union. We're taking the head of our youth office, Jane Driscoll, uh, who at that time, among other things, will be my wife, uh, and uh, uh, a woman who is a, Beth Phillips, who is a librarian uh, from the, um, our library, the Fletcher Free Library, who are interested in youth activities uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, and what I hope to see out of this is an ongoing program uh, in which, which will benefit both the, that community in the Soviet Union and the city of Burlington. But the people who are interested in that uh, should give us a ring. It hopefully will be ongoing, going into I years to come. Uh, and I see that as something of uh, great excitement and importance uh, for our community. OK, George, do you have some? Uh no, that's it. That's it. That's not it. You know that there are a dozen other things. It's been an extremely, extremely busy time. Uh, we are concerned about a number of the issues taking place in the legislature. We don't have time now to get into the growth bill, some of which we are excited about and see as a positive step forward. Some of it we have real concerns about, specifically at this point the statewide property tax, uh, which we are not supporting here in the city, nor is the League of Cities uh, and Towns. Michael, do you have any? Um, there should be more exciting changes on the waterfront as uh, as we proceed over the summer. Look for the various improvements paid for by the two point nine million dollar waterfront bond uh, happening in every city park on the waterfront. And, uh, it's going to be an exciting summer. Okay. Uh, so from a very busy city hall, I thank George Tabo for joining me, uh, Mike Monty, uh, and we'll be chatting with you again shortly. Thank you very much.